Welcome again. My name is Robert Allen. Welcome to the Bobcasts, where Robert Allen and myself talk about uh, financial freedom, success, um, how you can achieve all you want in your life, real estate investing. There's so many subjects we, we cover throughout our, our Bobcast conversations. I'm the author of these books, number one New York Times bestsellers, books that have sold millions of copies and have reached millions of people all across the world. Maybe they've reached you, and I certainly hope so. During our conversations uh, over the last couple of podcasts, Bobcasts as I call them, we've been talking about three interlocking circles of, uh, of important parts of success. I want you to be successful. And therefore, when I talk about success, um, sometimes I, I'm going to go into a much broader context than most people who are you know, talking just about real estate investing. I want you to be successful in all areas of your life. And when it comes to the, the systems, uh, the system skills you need and the people skills and the, the mindset skills, they all fit together for you to be successful as a real estate investor. Do you want that? Can you imagine yourself doing that? Are you good at it? Well, you say, well, I'm a beginner. I don't know if I'm good at it. <clears throat> what would it take to be good as a real estate investor? You'd have to be good at three things. You'd have to, if you have talent, you'd be good at finding good bargain properties or actually seeing bad properties and, 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 and imagining how you could make them into good investment properties. <clears throat> that's a skill. And I think that's a talent where you look at an ordinary piece of real estate and, and it looks different to you because you are... You just got a way of just doing it. You know, you, 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 you see a, a vacant piece of property and you can imagine what kind of investment uh, process might happen in order for you to create something on that vacant piece of real estate. It's, it's a talent. It's just kind of a way you think. You'd have to be good at finding deals. You have to be good at funding deals. How do you organize creative financing? It's something you've got to be good at. And can you learn it? Yes, you can. But it's one thing in terms of my talents. When I got started, I was good at that. Um, how did I learn it? I don't know. I just kind of fell into it, and I just began to be good at it. And then I began to learn from other mentors like you're learning from me. And then I eventually, yeah, I started teaching other people. And they began to use what I was teaching them. So, yeah, I, I was good at finding those deals and farming those deals. This is where I wasn't all that good. <clears throat> farming meaning how do I take a real estate invest investment, a property, and how do I turn it into a profitable investment and manage it? Managing it is not something I'm very good at. Buying it, getting it done, finishing it off, maybe flipping it, I'm okay with that. Uh, managing it, not so good. Um, it means I either had to learn how to do it or I had to bring a member of my team who was really good at that. And therefore, I want to bring on to a member of my team people who have purposes to do the things I'm not very good at. So in our previous couple of podcasts, I've been talking about um, what you do to get things done. How do you make decisions so that they take you where you want to go? Um, the last Bobcast we just discussed was, uh, how do I know it's my purpose in life to do that? How do I fit um, my talents, my passions, my values, so it becomes my destiny? And that's a very broad conversation. Today, I'm going to talk about how do I find members of my team who are, who it is their purpose in life to do on my team what I'm not good at so that they do the three things that I just described to you in the last Bobcast. They, they are good at, say, managing a property. They are good at negotiating with the seller. They are good at putting together the creative financing techniques. Um, whatever I'm not very good at, they are brilliant at. When it comes to my online marketing, um, I understand online marketing. I understand how to do the social media game. I understand how to do the Facebook game, how to buy advertising online and offline. I understand it all, but I'm not 
passionate about it. It's not something that keeps me up late at night reading all the books about it. Um, I'm, I'm good enough to understand it, but it's not important to me. That's why I don't do it. But I want somebody on my team to whom it is important. Uh, when, when I get somebody, uh, when I'm trying to create a website and, and figure out all the little ways to make that website look, um, how to change a word here or change a word there, I know what needs to be done, <clears throat> but I don't want to do it. Why? I'm not, I'm not interested in it. <clears throat> it's not important to me. Well, it's important it gets done, but it's not important that I do it. And in addition to that, I'm not very good at it. But a member of my team, he's brilliant at it. I want him to do it. Uh, I want him to do all the little details to make the website look good. I want him to. I want to help. Uh, have him help me with all those areas. I can understand what he's doing. But I don't want to learn it. I don't want to spend any time on it. I want a member of my team that fits into my team. Fits because they get to do something that I can't do. Just like an orchestra. You know, I'm, I'm the conductor. Um, I know how the violin is supposed to sound. And I know the, the range of, of, of how to play or how someone would be playing a violin. But... I don't want to put in the time and effort to become a good violin player. I know what I want from the violin, but I'm certainly not going to do it. <clears throat> I'm not going to leave the podium and go down into the orchestra and take up the violin and say, I want you to play it like this. Um, I'm just going to let them do what they're really good at. Same thing comes with an oboe, same thing with the drums, same thing with uh, the clarinet. I understand what needs to, what they need to sound like. But I don't have the passion, the talent, or the, or the values to do those things myself. But as an orchestra leader, I know what I want from every member of my team. Therefore, you are the orchestra leader of your life. You have to figure out, this is what I was born to do. This is what I'm good at. Nobody can do it as good as I can. I, I'm going to describe that by saying, the only what are you, when it comes to doing what you do, how can you be the only person who could do that? Because you have a special way of doing it that no one else can do it like that. I have a special gift, talent for doing the things the way I do them. I, I don't have to spend time writing down notes of what I want to say to you. I literally... In my mind, I know exactly what I want to say. The words come out pretty much the way I want them to, to come out. It's just, it's just what, the, what I do. It's my, it's my violin. I like it. I'm passionate about it. It's important to me. I'm good at it. Therefore, I'm going to play it. And you're listening to it. What are you on, in the orchestra? What do you instrument do you play? When it comes to the real estate game, what are you good at? Are you good at negotiating? Are you good at interacting with people? Are you good at uh, networking with people? Are you good at borrowing money from people? Are you putting, good at putting people together? Uh, are you good at the, the OPR game? OPR means other people's resources. You're the orchestrator, so you have to orchestrate the resources that are needed to put that deal together and to make profit from it you'll have to bring members of the team together. Who are the members of your team? You're going to need a great realtor on your team. You're going to need a great banker on your team or a mortgage broker. You're going to need a great fix-up person on your team, uh, someone who's good at their hands. You can tell I'm not, I don't have any calluses on my hands. It's not what I do. Why is it not what I do? Because it's not my talent. I'm not good at my, with my hands. It's because it's not my passion. I could care less about, about you know, making anything, uh, making a house. I don't, I don't care about that. It's not my, my passion. It's so not important to me that I don't do it and I will never do it. That's how not important it is. But I need somebody on my team. When they walk through my property, 
from that I, that I want to buy, they go, watch out for this. I notice a little thing up here, a little, looks like there's some leak in the roof there. They are seeing things I can't even, I don't even notice. I'm totally blind to them. Do you have somebody like that on your team? Do you have a management person on your team who loves to deal with tenants? Whether the tenants are commercial tenants or residential tenants, they all have different kinds of needs. And, you know, I, I've, I've, I've lived in places, I've been a, a tenant in, in uh, buildings before where the management team was jerks. You know, they just were not good at dealing with people. I didn't want that person on my team. If I, if I had a building like that, I wouldn't want a person like that on my team. <clears throat> you're going to orchestrate, you're going to pull together over time, it may take you years to finally assemble your team. At first, you're going to have to do it all. And more than likely, you'll be bad at most of it. As I say, as an entrepreneur, you need to hold, wear a whole bunch of hats. If you're uh, making money from selling a widget to some, to some place in the world, then you have to have the manufacturing widget hat. You know, you got to, how do I manufacture a hat like that, or, or a widget like that? Um, how do I how, how do I orchestrate the, the 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 employees to do the things on my team that I'm not good at? I've got to I've got to have a, a person that can manage the people, right? I've got to have somebody who's good with numbers. I've got to have an accountant. Somebody's got to pull that together. I can outsource a lot of these things to other geniuses, but generally speaking, as a beginning entrepreneur especially if you're a real estate investor, you're going to probably do it all yourself and probably do it badly. And maybe so badly that you end up losing money on a property because you overestimated or underestimated and, and things didn't turn out the way you thought you would, they would. But eventually, through all the, the scars of the beginning experience, you'll finally figure out, you know what, I'm really good at doing this part of it. This is mine. This is where I am the only, I'm the only person who can do this on my team. I'm going to do that. <clears throat> Other people I'm going to bring onto the team. Hopefully I can outsource them in such a way that they're not my employees because I don't want a lot of employees. I'd like to be able to let them, you know, pay them when I need to, um, pay them uh, whatever I need to do to pay them to do the, the, the genius job I, I want them to do. But I, I don't want to have a whole bunch of employees. I want to outsource most of it if I can. But if I do have an employee, fine, I'll, I'll do that. But it's because they fit a cog in the machine that only they could do. They are the only. And every member of your team is so good that they are the only ones who could do that job. They could only wear that hat. They could only wear the marketing hat or the management hat or the manufacturing hat or the shipping hat or the, the legal hat or the accounting hat. There are a lot of hats. And as I said, at first you'll wear all of them. And then eventually you'll find that it's cheaper in the long run to let other geniuses do the things you're not a genius at just is because you doing it might seem cheaper at first but then eventually you make a mistake that somebody else would have spotted in a in a second but you because you've never done it before not very good at it it's not your talent it's not your passion not your value you didn't see it you had a blind spot to it it's going to cost you big money to solve the problem that you created because you were so too, too cheap to go hire a genius. Now, they don't have to be a genius, and they don't have to be pay them in that kind of fee, but at least somebody that's a whole heck of a lot better than you are, and eventually you'll find that person or that group of people, and they'll form your genius team. You'll be doing your genius piece, and probably part of it will have to be the leader, the orchestra leader. You might still play an instrument in the orchestra because it's the instrument that only you can play because you're the only. But uh, ultimately, you got to orchestrate everybody. you got to make sure they know what they're doing and that you know what it is they're doing. You don't do it 
but you go, this is what I want from you. So Steve Jobs, the reason he was uh, the best in the world and the worst in the world. He was one of the worst, you know, management type people because he knew exactly what he wanted and he would not stop until he got it no matter who he had to run over to get it. But he knew exactly what he wanted each member of his orchestra to produce. This is the music I want from you. This is exactly what, it, what comes from it. And therefore he pushed them until they got it. Some of us are not good at that. I, I, I'm not good at that. I'm not good at requiring people to, to produce um, as an orchestra leader, I, I, I'm still, that's, that's not my talent. It's not my gift. I'm really good at the teaching part, but in terms of orchestrating everybody, um, still working on that one and still bringing people onto my team who do those kinds of things for me. How, what does your team look like? Now, why, why does this boil down to the fork conversation we've been having. The decision you're making of those thousand decisions you make every day, a few of those decisions, about 1% of them, will make you have the ideal lifestyle. The, the things you do, the decisions you make on these forks are, number one, does this fit who I am? So you get to say no to everything else. That means there'll be thousands of opportunities that are given to you every day. But since you've decided these are the talents and the gifts you have, then you get to decide to say no to everything else. And that's what Steve Jobs and Warren Buffett said that they're the best at, saying no. Saying, and Warren Buffett gets to choose out of the 10,000 possible options in the stock market, he gets to choose 50. And he gets to say no to 9,950. And therefore, those 50 made him the, one of the wealthiest billionaires in the history of the world because they fit exactly who he was. And he brought onto his team only people who would do the kinds of things he didn't want to do. And the same thing with Steve Jobs. And, and although you may like or not like either one of them or Bill Gates or any of the one of the big billionaires that we talk about, Elon Musk, do you like him or not like him? I don't care. Just look at what they produced. And some of them may pay an eternal price for the way they, what they had to do to pr produce it. But the point is, <clears throat> I've got an iPhone and I love it. And Steve Jobs has been dead for years. And not only did he leave a legacy, but he left a system that produces more genius works like that. And I think that's what you want, isn't it? Okay, so today's conversation was about team. How do you orchestrate people and get to decide who helps you create this dream you said you have? Because you can't do it by yourself. This, this circle, when it comes to people skills, I want to find somebody on my people team who do the things I can't do and love it. They're passionate about it. They can't even sleep at night. They love it so much. That's who I want on my team. So our conversation during this podcast is who's on your team? How do you find them? How do you vet them? How do you say no to some and yes to some others? How do you put them in a way that they get compensated? How do they make you more money than you would do if you were by yourself? Because you're going to make more money with a team, just as, period, than you will all by yourself. So the decisions you're going to make today is, if I decide to do that, the infrastructure around my real estate investing career I need a team of geniuses to make me pull off my dream. And I'm going to challenge you to, to start asking around. You'll, you'll ask your realtor, uh, your realtor, are you the person that I want on my team? I need someone to help me find good deals. I'm happy to compensate you based upon the legal requirements of our partnership. 
you get a certain percentage of a commission when I buy a property. That's it. Are you the best? So you're going to be looking for a realtor. You want to look for a creative realtor, don't you? You want to look for a realtor that isn't um, hedged in, boxed in by, by the rules of supposedly the way the world works, the world, the world of real estate. This is the way we do it in the world of real estate, they say. This is the, the, these, are the, these are the kind of people we want to deal with. This is, these are the banks we deal with. This are the, these are the, the inspections that we get done. This is just the, the game. Um, do you want a, a creative realtor who thinks outside the box of the rules? Obviously, you can't break the legal rules or the ethical, moral rules. But in terms of everything else, it's open game. So you want a creative realtor like that. It's a very important part of your team. Uh, did, did you interview somebody to try to find somebody like that? Did you go into a real estate office and ask them, hi, who is the most creative realtor here in the, in the office? Did you go right to the broker and ask them? Did you ask around? Um, eventually, you're going to stumble on one or two or three realtors who are awesome. They're going to help you pull together other members of the team. They're going to help you pull together the right, um, uh, the right insurance team. They're going to, um, because the, pro the property you're going to buy needs to be insured, and you're going to have the right kind of warranty insurance, and they're going to help you pull together a list of the people they have been dealing with over years, and they're going to give you that, that network almost immediately. Because that's one of the reasons for having a great realtor. Because if they're experienced enough, they've been through enough closings enough, they've dealt with enough, uh, with enough successes and failures enough that you'll, they'll know, nope, don't use that person Yes, use this person. This is the, the title company that you're going to use. Why? Because they're just, they just do what I tell them to do. And they are, they're, they're smart, they're sharp, they're quick, they're fast. Yeah, they cost a little bit more money, but you don't want anybody else. So in other words, each member of your team brings with them their network. And they'll be able to tell you what took them years to accumulate. You can learn in five minutes in an hour because they're bringing their network with them. And now you get to go to their network, the title company officer, the insurance agent, the fix-up specialist, um, the mortgage broker. Hey, you get to go talk to them and get to add them to your team. So this is the fastest way for you to assemble your team. Finding out from word of mouth who should be on your team. And then you, 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 you now, now if you are smart, <clears throat> you'll go talk to those people and they'll be able to share with you the things that they're passionate about, that they're good at, that are important to them. Th th they have accumulated decades of experience. So in just a few minutes... You have access to all of that. You can assemble a top-notch, first-rate, number one team in 30 days or less with just the right realtor who now exposes you to the right kind of networks. And then when you're talking to each of those members of your team, they too have had experience with all the other types of experts that you are looking for. So let's talk with a title agency, for instance. They, you're going to have to get title insurance on your property, at least in America you do. In other parts of the world, you know, you'll follow the rules of your country. But if it's a title company, that means they're going to ensure that the title is perfect. That means when the person who says they're the, they're, that they're the owner, when they transfer that ownership title to you, that they actually did own it and that it's insured by the company that you're getting title insurance with, that that title is, is, is the way they said it is, that, it, they, that you have actual title to the property. So, do you think that title insurance 
professional, has dealt with other realtors, has dealt with other insurance brokers, has dealt with other mortgage brokers, dealt with other bankers, has dealt with other fix-up people. Everybody that you're looking for probably has gone to that title insurance company a thousand times. So within a few minutes, by dealing with people who do this business for a bit for a lifetime, for their livelihood, they can tell you, yes, use this guy. No, you don't use that gal. She's better at doing this. In other words, they can like I said it's gonna take you 30 days to assemble a team. How about how about three days if you really were, you know, really aggressively going for it? Um the people that are involved in the closing of a deal will know all the other people you need to know. Let's take a mortgage broker, for instance. So somebody recommends you go to this mortgage broker. This guy is great. He's the best of the best. You go to him and you talk to him. Because this guy or gal has had Depends on their their experience, but they may have had hundreds. They have dealt with hundreds of real estate agents. If they've done hundreds of deals, hundreds of mortgages, they've dealt with hundreds of title companies. They've dealt with all of the players in the game. So as soon as you enter into the game itself and you're trying to assemble a team by just talking to those three people, you should be able to assemble everybody else you need. The realtor, the, uh, the title company officer, and a mortgage broker. There you are. Talk to three people, and you can establish uh, everybody you want to know. Now, you, you're talking with a realtor. Maybe somebody recommended you to that realtor. Who recommended you? Maybe it was the title company officer. Maybe it was the mortgage broker. Maybe it was a, a rich friend of yours that does a lot of real estate investing. But, hey, when you go interview that realtor... Maybe you find out that, you know, you don't resonate with them. They might have resonated with somebody else, but, you know, it just doesn't seem to click with you. Oh, there are a thousand other realtors in your city. But this podcast is for you to assemble your team because at the decision fork of your life, when a thousand decisions are made today, 1% of those decisions are going to take you what you really want. You need a team of people to help you get what you want. And what I just described to you is how you form a team. Now, real estate has so many members of of the team that will make it happen for you. If I were going into a different kind of entrepreneurship, if I were going to go to how do you make money on the internet marketing information? Oh, that's a whole different team. Um, That would be people who create websites, people who do Facebook advertising, they're they're advertising, people who generate databases, people who do uh, email marketing. Oh, there's just all kinds of different members of the team you have to assemble in the same way. And if I want to to be marketing a product that I have to market from a a storefront, then I'm going to assemble a totally different kind of team. How do I find a leasing agent that can find me the right kind of uh, rental space? How can I pull together uh, an accounting team to make sure that I'm doing my numbers right, do my taxes right, uh, manage my people right? In other words, every system requires different types of teams. So book multiple streams of income here talks about 10 ways of making money while you sleep. So real estate forms three of those streams, three different types of streams of income coming from real estate, three different types of teams. When it comes to the stock market, that's several of the streams in this book, multiple streams of income, I have to form another team. Who are the brokers I'm going to deal with? Who are the brokerages I'm going to deal with? Who are the tax people I'm going to deal with? Whole different team. Back to real estate. Your real estate team is essential to your success. Ultimately, they may be bringing you the deals that you're looking for because you were clear with them, this is what I'm trying to accomplish. 
in the next five years. Do you want to be on my team? Because as I do more and more deals, that'll be more money for all of us. Do you want to be on my team? And you interview them as if you would interview an employee. Uh, uh, Fortunately, almost every member of the team that I just mentioned to you, none of them are employees. They're all independent contractors, only be only paid from a percentage of the profits when there are, when there are profits. So uh, a real estate agent gets a commission. It just comes right off the top. That's what they get paid. A mortgage broker, he gets a commission or she gets a commission. A title company officer, they get fees. In other words, they win when you win. Therefore, I don't have to pay them monthly salaries. <coughs> Excuse me. So... That's the conversation when we're talking about people skills because you are the orchestra conductor. Find people to sit in those seats and play the instruments that need to be played so that the symphony of your life, the ultimate ideal symphony, plays the music that you want to hear because it's the music you like. It's the music that inspires you and motivates you. It's a life, an ideal life that represents your destiny. Not only what you want to do, but how you want to contribute to the fact you're here during this short period of time called life. Wish you well, my friends. We'll have another podcast, another another Bobcast sooner or later. I hope this has been valuable to you. If it has been, of course, I want to give you the tools to help you. So um, one of the tools is um, Think and Grow Rich. So up here on the corner, you're going to click on the link so that you'll be able to download the book, Think and Grow Rich. You get the audio version, the, the, uh, the, the full e-book version of it. It's my gift to you. I want you to have it. When it comes to the challenge uh, of making real money in, in real estate. I have a book called The Challenge, and I want you to have a copy of it. It's about how I took people off the unemployment lines of St. Louis, Missouri, taught them what I'm teaching you, and they went and did it. They went from $5,000 in the first 90 days to $100,000 in the next 12 months. So it's a, it's a story of how they did it. And I taught them the three fundamental skills, system skills, people skills, and mindset skills. They used that knowledge. They did it. It was important to them, and they made it happen. So this is a gift for you. So make sure you take advantage of that. Click on the links. Uh, download them. Watch them. And then when, uh, if, if you're watching this uh, on YouTube or however you're experiencing this, this Bobcast, then make sure you leave comments so that uh, if there's a place for you to leave a comment, tell me what you liked. Tell me what you enjoyed. If you didn't like it, tell me. I need to know that. And uh, if you learned something, a special aha you had, tell me what the aha was. Uh, And if you read the the challenge book or listen to the uh, Think and Grow Rich book by Napoleon Hill, put that in the comments. Say, I downloaded the book. Thank Bob, it was great. Um, Tell me what you learned. What were your ahas from that? Okay? In other words, this is my gift to you. I hope it's been, uh, not only the podcast has been valuable to you, but the gifts I want to give you, I want them to make your life even better. Why? Why am I doing this? Because I want your success story. Why would I want your success story? Because that's my purpose in life, for your life to be better. That's how my life gets better. Simple. See you on the next Bobcast. Bye-bye.